So this seems like a, a, a very exciting advance, a really important advance, uh, and one that's probably going to be a, somewhat of a game changer for our allogeneic patients who are CMB zero positive. And I'm sure there are a lot more studies that we'll want to conduct in the future, whether we should be extending uh, therapy beyond the 14 weeks that was a somewhat arbitrarily uh, picked uh, interval there. And uh, can you comment on any studies that might be worth considering in the, in the future? Definitely, as you mentioned, um, the drug is approved now for the first 14 weeks after transplant, so up to day 100. We know that in our practice there are patients at risk for CMV well beyond that period. It would be important to address this in a clinical trial to see how um, is letermovir effective, uh, giving a longer duration of letermovir, perhaps even through week 24. It would be important to see how letermovir would work perhaps as a secondary prevention. So if patients had developed uh, CMV viremia and was treated successfully, uh, what happens? Can we uh, use letermovir for these patients if they are still at high risk? Or what happens to patients that had previously received letermovir and then they reactivated and being treated? Can we use letermovir again in these patients? And I think that uh, CMV prevention in stem cell transplants is only the landing indication for letermovir. Given the safety profile, there is a lot of potential uh, for other settings, including perhaps a congenital CMV infection that is currently a, a major problem. Well, thanks very much for joining us today. I think that the, um, uh, the world of transplantation has changed. The prognosis for transplant patients has changed over the years, and uh, a great deal of that change has occurred because of improvements in supportive care, particularly in the world of infectious disease, and I think this is just another example of the kind of improvement we need to see to, to benefit all our patients. Thank you very much.